one of the things that happens when people come here mm. is uh, you you think that you're you think you're really unique. So you think your idea is the, the best idea anyone's ever heard. It isn't. Right? There's a long line of people who have brilliant ideas who are waiting tables at Jerry's famous deli. Right. So producers will come to you sometimes like you'll go and you have this great idea or you think it's a great idea. That, and it may be. There's nothing's new, but maybe yours is a new twist on this idea. And you know, okay, here's what I want to do. And uh, they agree to do it, but you have to agree to these changes. Mm-hmm. But you've slaved over the screenplay for the last 15 years, so you don't want to change a word. That doesn't necessarily go over well, because right. that got, got the money to get your film done. So you got to, there's got to be a, right? Because the Stallone thing doesn't exist anymore. You, you can't do what Stallone did with Rocky anymore which is this is a great screenplay i'm going to play rocky period you know and then ultimately someone goes okay we're going to try our luck on this brand new guy that nobody knows and then it becomes what it becomes right uh it's too the the town is too saturated now with people who have ideas you know so you have the flexibility and uh my partners on that particular film didn't want that flexibility so i had to leave what yeah. what percentage of this whole um, career that field that you're in, Marlon? I, I smell really good work ethic out of you. Like just looking through and here listening to you talk about kind of your experiences and things that you've done, and that's something Jay and I spend a lot of time on. <laughs> like we just spend time on the phone going, man, you'll never believe. Like I was at the you know. Uh, dealership today and these guys didn't even bother to like put the dipstick back in the you know in the crankcase and it just seems to me as I look through your your history that work ethic has been kind of a key to success is that absolutely okay. absolutely I, you know I, I, my, my wife and I talk about this quite a bit because um, I think that's part of our generation Right. I, I think I think that thing has been lost on the new the, the generation after us. I actually wrote a wrote a wrote a, 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 an audio book about about okay, this. Again, you're going to get me points at home. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> well, it's, it's about relationship, but it's called um, it's called the, the last dinosaur uh, subtitled and every man's guide to the new woman. And it's about how we have to change as men to adapt to this new independent woman that grew out of our generation. Because up until our, up up till our our parents' generation, they they all had, there were roadmaps on how men, uh, what what men's jobs were and what woman's job was. And basically that was dad went to work, brought home the bacon and mom cooked it and took care of the kids, right? So as we grew older, and grew to to dating age we assumed that that's what a family was going to look like but we grew up we grew up during the 60s revolution so there's a the equal rights movement and there's a civil rights movement so women were like i don't know what you're talking about with me staying home and taking care of anybody <laughs> you know and i don't know what you that i'm not going to work so she's working and you're working so we have to go back to our dads for the advice and the advice is hey look my my wife has a job uh, equal to mine or, or better than mine. How did you deal with that when mom had a job? And our dad's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Your mom stayed home and worked, right? And equally, women were saying that, that asking that same question to their, essentially the same question to their mothers. Like, how did you balance your career and family? And the mothers were like, I didn't have a career. Family was my career, right? So you have this clash of these two people that are, it, it, it's, we're the first generation of people to be able to, to, to have to deal with that. How do, how do we deal with this change in how, you know, how the social dynamic has changed? So as we're trying to come up with that, then, it, it, then we're stuck with, or we're, we're, you know, what we're, we're approached with, how do we raise our sons? 
you know, because we can't raise our sons like we our dads raised us. So we're in this we're in this fact finding thing of how to become this new man. We're trying to give it to our sons, and and along with that, we don't want them to have to work as hard as we did because you know we had to work at the parts store or we had to work in a watermelon field, you know, or or picking peas at at Mr. Luther's farm. And so so what we see, I believe. This is all Marlon says so, by the way. But what we see as a work ethic is a total is totally different than how they see a work ethic. They essentially see themselves starting out in the middle. You know, mm-hmm. we we always thought we we're gonna start at the bottom. From any place that we went, we're gonna start from the bottom. So the work ethic that we know kind of goes away. And uh, and and the belief is that the starting at the middle is the way it is. The truth is it is never gonna be any different. You're always gonna start at the bottom, right? 